Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about the file path, how to specify the path for any file to perform any particular operation. And then we are going to learn about the copy and move commands. Finally, we will end this video by talking about concatenating files. So, the commands that we are going to cover here are cd, cp, mv and cat command. Before we start with these commands, let us first talk about the concept of path. So, there are two ways in which we can specify the path. So, there are many commands that we have learned so far and in each of these commands, we have specified the file, the file name. Most of the times we have considered that the file is in our current working directory, but what if the file is in a different directory? Then to specify that path, we need, we can use two ways, either the relative method or the absolute method. In the relative method, we specify the path from the current directory onwards, but in an absolute path, we specify the path starting from the root itself. Now, what I mean by this is, let us suppose this is the directory hierarchy wherein the root directory contains two directories, home and etc. Home contains the directory user and the current working directory for you is home. Let us suppose you want to create the Linux file inside home. So, if you are already inside home, you need not to specify the full path starting from the root. You can simply specify the name of the file. So, in the relative path, if I want to create this file Linux, I will simply write touch Linux. So, the system will assume that Linux is in the current working directory which is home. Now, let us suppose you want to create the Linux file inside the user directory. So, you are currently inside the home directory. So, if we are going to use the relative path, then I will write touch user slash Linux which means that you need to create the Linux file inside the user directory and where is user directory inside the current working directory. Do not write slash user slash Linux. If you write slash user, this means user will be inside the root directory. If you are going to use the relative path, never start with slash. Okay? The corresponding absolute path, absolute path always begin with from the root. So, this time you will begin with slash inside the root there is home, inside home there is user, inside user you want to get Linux. So, you write slash home slash user slash Linux. Let us take one more example. If you want to create again the Linux file, but inside etc. Now, etc is not in the current path. So, you have to use the absolute method here. So, you are going to write touch slash etc slash Linux. Remember, in the absolute path, you will always start from the root directory. In the relative path, you will start from the current directory onwards. You will not specify the current directory also, just from the next child onwards. Now, let us explore about path by taking some practical examples. If I check the current working directory, it is slash home slash Baljeet. We have used the touch rm mkdir rmdir commands in the previous video. Now, in that case, whatever we have done, we have done in the current working directory only. But what if we want to perform any task somewhere else? So for example, with ls command, if I use ls, it lists the contents of the current working directory. What if I want to view the contents of etc directory, etc directory, which is inside the home directory? So, since that is not in my current path, my current path is Baljeet, which is inside home, which is inside root. So, now I have to use the absolute path to view the contents of etc directory. So, I will write ls slash etc. Remember, absolute path will always begin with root slash. So, I can see the contents of etc directory. Now, let us suppose that I want to create another directory inside downloads. So, I will write mkdir downloads. In this case, I can use relative path because downloads is in my current working directory. And let us suppose I create a directory here, d1. Inside, inside downloads, I am creating d1. So, the next command is cd. The cd command is used to change the current working directory. 
let us understand this with the help of an example. So, now let us shift to D1 directory. So, cd downloads D1 pwd. So, you can see now D1 is my current working directory. Now, let us suppose I want to create a file Linux inside the triple A directory, which was inside my Baljeet directory. Okay. This triple A here was inside Baljeet directory. Now, that is not in my current directory. D1 is the current working directory. So, Baljeet is in a different path. So, in this case, the best way will be I can use the absolute path or I have to move up the parent directory to downloads and then again back to Baljeet. But rather than doing that, what I will do here, I will use touch command and give an absolute path which is what home Baljeet AAA and here I can create Linux. Let us check. Is it created inside AAA? So, ls again absolute path slash home slash baljeet slash AAA. So, you can see that the file is created. Now, cd command, one example we have already seen. So, from the current working directory, if I want to shift to the home directory, I can simply write cd space tilde and it will automatically jump to the home directory. It does not matter where you are with cd space tilde, you will automatically move to your home directory. Let us again move to downloads d1. If I now want to go one level up, that is the parent directory of d1, then I can simply write cd space dot dot. If I want to again go one level up cd space dot dot right so these are the different ways in which we can use the cd command okay the next command is cp cp is used to copy files from one directory to another directory an important aspect to remember is you can copy multiple files at once into one destination directory but you cannot copy one file into multiple destinations so, you will write cp, then all these source files and the final parameter will always be the destination directory. cp is used to copy files. So, the syntax is cp source files, there can be many sources and then destination. Destination can be only one. So, let us suppose we want to move the file practice into AAA, right. Let us check. So, you can see the practice file is moved inside AAA. Similarly, I can move multiple files. So, let us move let sample 1 and sample dot C, three files into AAA, sorry. C P L S A A T and now you can see all these files are moved, copied. Sorry, not moved but copied. The same thing is applicable for directories also, but in case of directories, we need to use the minus R option recursive because I don't want to just move the directory. I also want to move the contents inside the directory. It is not possible that you simply copy the directory and do not copy the contents, right? So, cp minus r, let us suppose we copy the directory d6 into aaa, lsaaa, you can see that d6 is also copied. The concept of path is applicable here also, the path concept is applicable to all the commands. So, what I mean here is, if you remember we created a directory d1 inside downloads, so now I like copy a directory d6 minus r d6 to downloads. Inside download there was d1. Now let me check whether it is copied or not. ls. So you can see 
D6 is copied inside D1. The next command is MV. It is similar to the use of copy command, but the difference is in CP we copy paste the files, whereas in MV we cut paste the files. So, in copy the source file will remain at the source directory also, but in move the file will be deleted from the source directory and will be moved into the destination directory. The syntax is exactly same as the CP command. There is another use of MV command which is to rename files. If my source and the destination directory are the same, then it will rename the file or the directory. So, let us understand this by taking relevant examples. So, move, let us suppose we move Linux file here, this one into the directory D7. If I list again, we can see there is no entry now for Linux. If we check D7, it is moved inside D7. The use is similar to CP, but this is the only difference. From the source, it will be moved and moved to the destination. There is one more use of MV command, which is to rename. So, if your source and destination are in the same path, then you can rename the file. For example, MV, let us rename this file let. I want to rename it to let.txt. So, you can see here in this case, the new name that I am specifying, it is again in the same working directory. So, there cannot be two files, right? I cannot move the same file to the same location. So, this means what? I am renaming it. ls, now you see, let is changed to let.txt. The final command is the cat command. The cat command is used to concatenate files. For example, let us suppose there are two files and the first file contains the content Red Hat, the second file contains Linux. So, if you concatenate these two files, it will create one file which con contains the content Red Hat and Linux. By default, the concatenation output will be displayed on the send output device, but if you want to save that, you can redirect that into another file. Cat has got multiple uses. Here we are going to discuss a couple of them. The first use is to view the contents. So, cat and then you can give the path of any file. Let us suppose I give here etc passwd, which is a file which contains the details about the users in the system. So, you can see I am able to see all the contents of the etc passwd file. We have also earlier viewed this with the help of head and tail command where we got only limited lines. But now this shows me the entire file. Similarly, I can do this for any file in the current directory also. Let's suppose for sample.c. So I can view the contents here itself without requiring the need of any editor. I can view the contents of the file on the terminal itself. Another use is the actual use which is cat stands for concatenation, right? So, I can club multiple files. So, let us suppose I want to view the contents of multiple files together. So, I use cat sample.c is one of the files and let us suppose the other file is sample1.c. So, you can see these are the contents of two separate files. This one is from sample.c and this is from sample1.c. I just list sample1.c separately also. So, you can see the last few lines are coming from this, right? So, this gives you an advantage of looking at the contents of multiple files together without having to open them separately one by one. So, I hope you are able to understand all the commands discussed in this particular video. In the next video, we are going to learn how to use the nano editor.